The Explore platform has been created for projects requiring high-throughput, large-scale analysis of thousands of proteins in multiplex. It has been optimized to be semi-automated using pipetting instruments which miniaturize the protocol, minimizing the consumption of precious sample and costly reagents. The Explore platform comprises protein panels in a 384 format, which are read out on Illumina sequencers, such as the NovaSeq and NextSeq. Up to eight Explore panels may be analyzed in parallel, depending on the flow cell used for sequencing. The following instructional video illustrates the Explore workflow for the analysis of four Explore panels, the cardiometabolic, inflammation, neurology, and oncology panels. However, it is possible to run the Explore workflow on just one or two panels, or use any other combination of panels in the Explore product range. Please read the manual before watching this instructional video. For more information on the Explore kit and how to order, visit the O-Link website. The workflow takes place over two days, where on day one, samples undergo an immunoreaction. And on day two, samples are prepared for next-generation sequencing. Before starting the protocol, ensure that the lot numbers for each panel match the lot number of the plate control to guarantee correct downstream analysis. It is important to master the plate vortexing technique shown here. For best results, the Eppendorf Mixmate Controlled Plate Vortex is recommended to vortex plates during pre-PCR steps. It is also important that all samples, plates, and reagents except for enzymes are vortexed thoroughly and spun down before use or after the addition of any reagent, sample, or mix. We begin the Explore workflow by preparing the samples for the immunoreaction and then incubating them overnight. All lab work for day one will take place in the pre-PCR room, where the first part of the proximity extension assay is completed. The following steps involve diluting your samples so that their protein signal is within the detectable range for downstream analysis. Before proceeding with the sample dilution, thaw all reagents and the plate containing the samples to room temperature. Presented here are the reagents required for this part of the workflow. Listed alongside are the consumable labware. Label one 384 well plate as sample source plate and another as sample dilution plate. Using a multi-channel pipette, transfer 10 microliters of each sample from the sample plate to the sample source plate as well as 10 microliters of the supplied O-Link controls into column 12 of the sample source plate, according to the following template. Seal both using adhesive film and store at 4 degrees Celsius until needed. The Dragonfly instrument will be used to add sample diluent to the sample dilution plate. Follow the manual instructions to prepare the Dragonfly instrument for use. Ensure that a syringe has been inserted into position B2 of the instrument and that a 10 milliliter disposable reservoir has been inserted into the corresponding B2 position. Insert the sample dilution plate into the plate position with well A1 at the top left-hand corner. Vortex the sample diluent before adding it to the sample reservoir. Then slide the reservoir to the aspirate position. Once initiated, the dragonfly will dispense 9 microliters of sample diluent into the wells of columns 1 through 18 and 29 microliters of sample diluent into columns 19 to 24 of the sample dilution plate, as shown here. The mosquito instrument will be used to add sample to the diluent in the sample dilution plate, resulting in 1 in 10, 1 in 100, 1 in 1000, and 1 in 100,000 serial sample dilutions. Note that dilution series may vary for different panels. Prepare the mosquito according to the manual instructions. Make sure that the instrument is turned on, that the tape reel is loaded with enough tips, and that the two attached humidifiers are filled with millicq water. Thaw the sample source plate to room temperature and ensure that there are no bubbles trapped at the bottom of the wells. Remove the adhesive cover from both the sample source plate and sample dilution plate and place both plates into magnetic clamps. Place the sample source plate and sample dilution plate onto decks 1 and 2 respectively. Make sure that they are inserted properly in the correct orientation. 
Once initiated, the Mosquito instrument will add one microliter of sample from the sample source plate into columns one to six of the sample dilution plate. The program will then pause. Remove the sample source plate and sample dilution plate and seal. Store the sample source plate at four degrees Celsius until required at the incubation step. Vortex the sample dilution plate thoroughly and spin down the plate. Remove the seal from the sample dilution plate, ensuring that there are no bubbles present in the bottom of the wells. Place it back into the magnetic clamp and insert it into deck two of the mosquito instrument for the second dilution. The mosquito will transfer one microliter of sample from columns one to six into columns seven through 12. The program will then pause. Remove the sample dilution plate and seal. Vortex and spin down before inserting it back into the instrument for the next dilution. The mosquito will transfer one microliter of sample from columns seven to 12 to columns 13 to 18 of the sample dilution plate. Upon the last pause, remove the sample dilution plate and seal. Vortex and spin down one more time before inserting it back into the instrument for the final dilution. The mosquito will transfer 0.3 microliters of sample from columns 13 to 18 to columns 19 to 24 of the sample dilution plate. Remove the sample dilution plate, vortex and seal before storing it at four degrees Celsius until required in the incubation step of the protocol. In this step, you will prepare eight different incubation mixes at a time, four mixes for each panel. Start by preparing the mixes for the cardiometabolic and inflammation panels. Note that once the incubation mix has been made, there are only 30 minutes in which to add the sample to the mix before the plates are to be stored overnight for incubation. Present here are the reagents required for this part of the workflow. Listed alongside are the consumable labware. Thaw all reagents to room temperature before use. Mark three 384 well plates as reagent source plate cardio incubation plate, and INF incubation plate. Prepare the incubation mixes for the cardiometabolic and inflammation panels in a fresh eight well PCR strip. Add the incubation solution first, followed by the forward probes, and then the reverse probes. Using a multi-channel pipette, manually transfer 10 microliters of incubation mix from the eight well PCR tube into every second row of the reagent source plate. Check the manual for the correct plate orientation. Seal the reagent source plate and spin it down, ensuring that there are no bubbles trapped at the bottom of the wells. The mosquito instrument will be used to transfer each of the eight incubation mixes to each incubation plate, followed by the sample and then sample dilutions. Place the reagent source plate on deck three of the mosquito instrument and the cardiometabolic and inflammation incubation plates on plate decks four and five. Plate decks one and two will remain empty. Once initiated, the mosquito instrument will transfer four of the eight different incubation mixes to each of the cardiometabolic and inflammation incubation plates. During this run, remove the sample source plate and sample dilution plate from storage and thaw to room temperature. Once the machine has paused, place the sample source plate and sample dilution plate on plate decks one and two respectively. Resume the protocol. The mosquito instrument will now add the sample and diluted samples to both incubation plates. Remove all the plates from the mosquito instrument. Seal and spin them down. Store the sample source plate and sample dilution plates at four degrees Celsius. Store the cardiometabolic and inflammation incubation plates overnight at four degrees Celsius to allow the immunoreaction to take place. Prepare the neurology and oncology probe mixes. Remove the sample source plate and sample dilution plates and allow them to reach room temperature. Repeat the mosquito protocol for the neurology and oncology incubation plates. After the program is completed, store the neurology and oncology incubation plates together with the cardiometabolic and inflammation incubation plates at four degrees Celsius for overnight incubation. Discard the reagent source plates and dilution plate. Store the sample source plate at minus 80 degrees Celsius for potential reruns. 
On day two, samples undergo the second part of the proximity extension assay, as well as next generation sequencing, which are performed in the post-PCR room. The second part of the proximity extension assay involves the extension of DNA tags attached to the antibodies through a pre-amplification step, thereby converting protein information into DNA information. Sample indexes will then be added to the resulting DNA libraries through a second round of amplification. This is followed by library purification and quality control for sequencing on the Illumina NovaSeq. As for day one, all samples, plates, and reagents except for enzymes must be vortex thoroughly and spun down before use, or after the addition of any reagent sample or mix. Again, the vortexing technique is integral to this protocol's success, so please watch the O-Link vortexing technique video before proceeding. In this step, the samples in the incubation plates will undergo PCR to extend and amplify the DNA tags. The following labware, reagents, and equipment will be required for this part of the protocol. Start the ProFlex instruments and pause when the PCR block reaches 50 degrees Celsius before beginning this part of the protocol. Allow all reagents except for the enzyme to reach room temperature, as well as the four incubation plates which have been incubating at 4 degrees Celsius overnight. Spin these plates down before use. Once the PCR1 solution has been made, it must be added to the samples and the PCR reaction started within 30 minutes. Spin the PCR1 enzyme briefly and keep this in a freezer block at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Prepare the PCR1 mix in a 50 milliliter Falcon tube. When preparing the mix, cold millicu water must be used and the reagents added in the order of water, enhancer, vortex thoroughly, then followed by solution, enzyme, then vortex for three seconds. Switch on the Dragonfly instrument and prepare it according to the manual instructions. Place three 10 milliliter disposable reservoirs in positions B2, B3, and B4. Attach a syringe at the complementary positions of the syringe plate. Pipette PCR1 mix into all three reservoirs and slide the reservoirs into the aspirate position. For the following steps, it is recommended that two people work together. This is to ensure that the following steps are completed within 10 minutes, by which time all plates must be placed into the PCR machine. The first incubation plate to be processed is the cardiometabolic incubation plate. Rename the incubation plate as cardiometabolic PCR1 and place it in the plate position. When the PCR1 solution has been added to the first well of the PCR plate, start a timer for 10 minutes. Once initiated, the Dragonfly instrument will dispense PCR1 mix into each well of the PCR plate. When the program has finished running, remove and seal the plate. Vortex it. Once the second plate has undergone the same process, the two plates can be brought to the post-PCR room and spun down. Only when the timer has finished should the cardiometabolic and inflammation plates be inserted into the ProFlex instrument and the PCR program started. Repeat this procedure for the neurology and oncology plates. The PCR1 plate may be stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius for up to two weeks in case of reruns. The EPMotion instrument will be used to pool all four panel PCR plates into one 384 well plate. Remove the four PCR plates from the ProFlex machine and allow them to reach room temperature before continuing. Make sure that the adhesive film on each plate is still properly attached to the plate surface. Vortex and spin down. Prepare the EPMotion work table according to the manual instructions. Ensure that there are no bubbles in either the bottom of the plate wells or the reservoir used in the instrument. Once initiated, the EPMotion instrument will first transfer water to all wells, then the four PCR1 plate panels into one plate. Refer to the manual for the resulting plate layout. Once the program has finished running, remove the PCR1 pooling plate, seal, 
vortex, and spin down. And seal the four PCR plates for storage at minus 20 degrees Celsius in case of potential reruns. During library preparation, sample indexes will be added to each sample for each panel in a second PCR amplification step. This allows for the differentiation of each sample from one another once pooled together into a DNA library. The following labware, reagents, and equipment will be required for this part of the protocol. Note that once PCR2 mix has been made, it should be used within 60 minutes. Allow all reagents, as well as the PCR1 pooling plate, to reach room temperature. Spin the enzyme down briefly before putting it in a freezer block at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Make sure that the ProFlex instrument is switched on before proceeding. Mark a 384 well plate as PCR2. Prepare the PCR2 mix in a 15 milliliter Falcon tube according to the manual instructions. Vortex and spin the tube and empty into a 30 milliliter reservoir to be used in the Epmotion instrument. Prepare the Epmotion work table according to the manual instructions. Insert the index plate into position B1, and after checking that there are no bubbles in the wells of the PCR1 pooling plate, insert it into position B3. Insert the empty PCR2 plate into position B2, and begin the program. The EPMotion instrument will dispense PCR2 mix into the PCR2 plate, followed by each index from the index plate, as well as the PCR1 pooling products. Once the protocol is finished, remove the PCR2 plate from the instrument, seal, vortex, and spin down. Ensure that there is the same volume in each well, and take note of any wells where the volume differs. Remove the PCR1 pooling plate. Seal it well and store at minus 20 degrees Celsius for potential reruns. Discard the index plate. Place the PCR2 plate into the ProFlex machine for a second amplification. Once the protocol has run to completion, remove the PCR2 plate and seal it before continuing. In the second round of PCR pooling, all PCR products will be pooled for each panel into an Eppendorf tube, resulting in four DNA libraries. This will take place in two steps. The first step will be carried out using the EPMotion instrument, and the second step will be completed manually. Mark a 96 well plate as PCR2 pooling plate. Prepare the EPMotion work table according to the manual instructions. Insert the PCR2 plate into position B2 and the PCR2 pooling plate into position C2 of the instrument. Once initiated, the EPMotion instrument will pool the PCR2 products from each panel into four columns, one column per panel. Seal, vortex, and spin down. Mark four Eppendorf tubes as PCR2 cardio, PCR2 neuro, PCR2 inf, and PCR2 onc. Using forward pipetting, transfer the contents from each well in the same column of the PCR2 pooling plate into an Eppendorf tube, changing tips after each well. Seal the original PCR2 plate and store it at minus 20 degrees Celsius for potential reruns. Discard the PCR2 pooling plate. The four libraries will now undergo purification and quality control. Library purification will be done using the Agincourt Ampure bead protocol and should be carried out according to the Explore manual. The purified libraries will then undergo quality control using the BioAnalyzer High Sensitivity DNA Kit and protocol. Note that high sensitivity DNA markers should be added to wells of the BioAnalyzer chip where sample libraries have not been added. For libraries to pass QC, the resulting graph should display one peak at approximately 150 base pairs. If libraries have passed QC, they will be sequenced using the Illumina NovaSeq or NextSeq instruments and their protocols. This concludes the video for the Olink Explore workflow. For further help and advice, contact our knowledgeable support team at support at olink.com.